Hello again, I am Blunty, and I wasn't planning on making a video today. Today is a day of the doing of many things, which doesn't include making a video. But I did wake up this morning to a piece of news that I thought was particularly compelling. Uh, my channel has never been about sort of breaking technology news stories, but this is sort of relevant to something I'm currently very excited about because... I myself have just started to explore the wonderful world of virtual reality for myself in my own home at very last after a long period of, of many, many tech demos at shows and, and, you know. But to the point, the news this morning is, well, overnight, well, overnight for me, Microsoft had one of their big press conferences thing where they said, oh, here's all our new products because, you know, they have new Surface things and they're doing something with Xbox and the, and the streaming service they just bought called Beam, which is like Twitch, but much smaller. But the piece of news I'm excited about is the VR stuff. Microsoft have just made a very aggressive and very, very interesting push to making VR an everyman kind of thing, or at least VR on the computer an everyman kind of thing. Now, you talk to most people out there about VR who are not sort of particularly tech-centric, they'll know about the Samsung Gear VR, they might know about the Oculus Rift, maybe even the Vive. But the issue with all those products is, well, the Oculus Rift and the Vive need a pretty beefy computer to do anything really cool with, and the Vive in particular needed a whole room to dedicate to the room scale stuff, and if you do have that space and that kind of money to spend, it is fantastic. But most people out there just don't want to do that or can't do that or can't afford to do that or whatever the reason is. It is hard for a, a product like Vive to really penetrate the market in any meaningful way. Then, of course, you've got the Samsung Gear VR, which I have only tried once at E3 and it seemed quite good. And I have tried other um, mobile phone based uh, headsets here. And I'll probably talk about this on a video. So I just got this in. It's one of the better ones I've tried. You know, the plastic shells you whack your phone into, in my case, the iPhone. And the mobile phone experience can be good it's not really fantastic and some people have who are rather passionate about the vr interest claim that you know the mobile experience can turn people away from vr because they try it and they go okay i get it i can look around it's oh it's making my eyes a bit wibbly and the frame rate's not very good and yeah. and then they write all the vr offers that experience makes them less likely to even try the really good vr but now you've got playstation in the market playstation a plug and play console experience vr yes it's not as good as you know, Swift, the vive the open source vr and stuff like that and the motion tracking is a bit wibbly because it relies on motion tracking that was invented for the playstation 3 and they haven't actually updated that but with the Microsoft Creative Update, we just had the anniversary update for Windows 10. The next one's the next big, you know, feature pack uh, update is going to be called the Creative Update. Will include within its support for a VR ecosystem that Microsoft are heading up with the help of. Let me get these companies right: HP, Lenovo, Dell, which probably also means Alienware, Asus, and Acer. And all these guys have got together to try and make VR on on your home PC and your laptops and whatnot. Uh, accessible, affordable, easy, simple, uh, uh, even simpler than the PlayStation VR is to set up, because that thing to set up is a huge pain in the ass by all reports. I've not done it myself yet, but apparently it's a pain in the ass to set up. Once you get it set up, it works fine, but setting it up is a bit of an issue. Um, even with the Oculus Rift and OS VR and, and Vive and all that, and the Vive particularly, because you've got the lighthouses up around the room, but you need, you know, a camera, at least one camera for, for you know, tracking and all that sort of stuff. And what the devices that Microsoft have announced are coming through all these hardware partners um, are six degrees of freedom devices and six off or six degrees of freedom tracking is basically what you get with the mobile experience right now. You don't get the true positional tracking that you get with the big VR devices that use the camera to look at it. It's unclear whether or not the Microsoft devices are going to have that kind of posi p positional tracking on them because they've got something that doesn't exist on current uh, you know, VR headsets you can buy. I mean, it's not a new technology. People have been fiddling with this for a while now, but this will be the first time it's being in a consumer product. It's called inside out tracking. That is, instead of having a camera looking at the VR device, which in the case of the OS VR and the Rift and stuff has a bunch of invisible infrared LED lights around it. So the camera can see that pattern of lights and figure out what angle it's sitting at and where it's moving to and all that sort of stuff. Inside out tracking is kind of the opposite of that. There are sensors on the headset itself that look out onto the world and pick up the details of the room. In many lab situations, our QR codes have got on the walls to make it really, really easy for computers to see them and see the angle at them. In sort of retail-ready home use inside-out tracking, that will have to be intelligent tracking. It'll probably be a bit like a Kinect in that it sort of beams out some infrared lasers and sort of sees the patterns of things and go, okay, there's an object there and there's an object there and the head moves this way and the object stays there. So I know, you know, comparatively how far this moved away from that and it works out the tracking that way. If you, I think I explained that clearly enough. Either way, inside out tracking. 
the penalty for inside out tracking is there's more stuff on the headset which makes the headset bigger heavier bulkier and draws more power now there are very scant details about this at the moment all we know is these headsets are coming they're coming from these brands they're working with microsoft and they have inside out tracking we don't know anything about the screen resolution we don't know anything about the refresh rate of the screens inside those we don't know the extent of that inside out tracking will it mean freestanding room scale stuff or will it mean seated or standing experiences only what we do know at the moment is they're targeting a very very affordable price 299 i think is their stated retail um, recommended retail price or however they phrased it and that puts it at a very accessible sort of place that that's you know console kind of moment yes you still have to have a computer to run it off but most people have a computer of some type or that's another thing we don't know we don't know the minimum specs is this thing going to be something you can run off you know onboard intel graphics or is this something you're going to need uh, at least a basic you know graphics card for the other thing we don't know is is this going to be one of those microsoft experiences that are locked down to the windows store experience only i mean <sighs> It's already a huge pain in the ass when it comes to gaming. I, I don't want the, the, the cheap, affordable, easy, simple VR experience for every man to be locked to the friggin' Microsoft store. The other interesting bow we can sort of draw from this and fire off into the future is, is this basically going to be uh, the, the prototype for what VR on the Scorpio is going to be? Scorpio, the next... Uh, Xbox version coming out and Microsoft are already on record of saying this will be our console that does VR and it's going to do it really well and it's going to do 4k gaming it's going to do all this fantastic I mean it's all PR talk at the moment but the point is what they've said about it so far as far as the power goes it will be VR capable even for you know Oculus Rift and, and, and HTC Vive kind of levels of VR experience it does have that kind of teraflop kind of power to be able to drive those experiences but is Microsoft's VR solution that they're going to be selling with this because it was never going to be here's the Scorpio you can use it with VR now go use it with your Oculus Rift or your HTC Vive or your OS VR or whatever Microsoft are not the type of company to leave that kind of money sitting on the table the Scorpio will be working with their own proprietary uh, VR headset that they will sell and nobody else because why would they leave that money on the table for anyone else to pick up maybe I'm wrong though Microsoft have occasionally <laughs> very occasionally been good guy Microsoft and maybe the Scorpio will wind up working with these kinds of headsets with the six degrees of freedom the inside out tracking and you can just plug your headset that you're using on your computer into your Scorpio maybe it's both maybe the Scorpio is going to have a fancy HTC Vive room scale type one but you can also use the six degrees of freedom inside out tracking seated or standing experience which these will probably be on your Scorpio as well we don't know, but the point is, this, this, this tiny nugget of news that I woke up to this morning is very exciting because there's a lot of potential there for VR to finally, I mean, VR has been gaining steam and gaining steam and gaining steam, but according to a lot of reports, the VR sales of the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift and stuff have kind of plateaued. Everyone who wants to be an early adopter pretty much is already at this point, apparently. Uh, so sales have slowed right down. So this, a cheap, affordable, easy plug and play. You don't have to set up cameras and lighthouses and stuff. It'll just have one or two cords coming off the back, probably USB and HDMI. Plug it into computer. It's built into Windows. You're ready to go. That has the potential to be a serious serious game changer when it comes to the adoption rate of vr to how many companies are investing their time into creating vr experiences to how many vr games we get to vr media movies and all that kind of stuff it's very exciting i'm slightly concerned that microsoft are behind it because it's microsoft <laughs> and i don't hate on microsoft but you know they do have a history of having these awesome ideas and then just sort of taking a gun loading up seven or eight foot bullets and just going buh, 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 into their feet that's where foot bullets go anyway <laughs> let me know in the down below area what do you think are you excited by this are you more likely to try vr if you can just pick up a headset for 300 bucks you don't have to set up any cameras and stuff you can just plug it into your computer and just do vr because i think a lot of people are going to be excited about this if Microsoft can get the marketing right. That's another Microsoft is so bad at marketing. So bad at marketing.
I try so hard to be hip and cool and just fail every time. It's kind of hilarious. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm, I almost suspect they're doing it on purpose at this point. You know, look at us, we're the, we're the, you know, cool old uncle on, on the skateboard at Christmas time. Oh, he's fallen and broken his hip. <laughs> and then everybody talks about it. Maybe it's their plan. Maybe they're awkward on purpose because it gets people talking. Who knows? Thanks for watching. I am Blunty and we'll catch you next time.